I'm Joey Arnold, and this is Original Otmeal. Welcome to Topics in Case You Want to Get Better in English. Here are some questions. This is brought to you by Wing Like Home. I may not be saying that right. I don't care. Well, actually, I do care, but I don't have time at the moment. So let's get to the questions here for speaking topics for B-level students or something like that. Topic one: Learning English. Number one: Do you like learning English? Question one: Do you like learning English? Oh yes, I do like learning English. I like learning English because if I was not learning English. I would not be able to make this video. This video would be really bad. I like to learn English because I want to communicate with people better and more efficiently and effective, effectively. Number two, how much time do you spend on learning English every day? All day. <laughs> because I I spend all day learning yeah, yeah, English. Yeah. So I'm always talking in English. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know any other You speak English. I spend all day getting better at English because you can get better at English. Believe it or not, even fluent native English American Ojibwe speakers can get better. They can get better. Okay, number three. Which skills do you like the best? The skills of talking. <laughs> <laughs> and listening is really important too. There are four fundamental skills: listening, writing, talking. Speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <remember. laughs> I only know one of them. <laughs> I pity you like it. You know I pity you like it. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> reading, talking, writing. <laughs> Let's talk some more. <laughs> Let's go back to reading. I mean, writing. I mean, talking. What? Listening. I'm gonna hang out with my mother. Okay. <clears throat> with number four, which skills do you find the most difficult? The skills of learning new words is very hard because when I see a word I don't know, I don't want to know it. And how am I going to remember all the new words, especially with the, if the if the words don't make sense? What am I going to do with these new words? I don't really know. Number five, what do you often do to improve your English? Do you listen, read, write, speak, try to learn new vocabulary? I really like to watch movies with subtitles. I started doing that when I was about 15 years old in the year 2000. Or maybe actually more like 2004 when I went off to college in New York and I started watching movies with the subtitles. As a writer I want to make sure I could spell the words and understand the words. You know, understand the words. Sometimes I would hear words in movies and TV shows and other things and I would not know what those words were and even to this day I could still misunderstand things even as a native English speaker I can misunderstand things or misspell things and make other mistakes especially with you ladies out there that's what my uncle would always say and I can't get that out of my head. I have my eye on you. That's something else that he would always say. My uncle would say, I got my eye on you. But I should keep my eyes on my studies a little bit more than just on the ladies, for you ladies out there, and other things too. I should have more focus, more direction, more motivation and drive to make the world a better place with starting with myself, if you know what I mean. Next question. Number six. How long have you been learning English? Since I was a baby. 
Number seven. When did you start learning English? Oh, that, uh, it's kind of like question six. Question six. How long have you been learning English? For 28 years. Oh, yeah, 28 years. Hi, Mui Tao, Julie. How old are you? Toy. Hi, Mui Tao, Julie. I am 28 years old. And I've been learning English for 28 years. When did you start learning English? When I was a baby. Get out of my body and into my belly. Do you find English difficult or easy? Difficult! English is difficult. English is so hard. I mean, obviously, I know a lot about English because I've been exposed to English for 28 years. So obviously I'm going to know a little bit of English after 28 years, but imagine if I just started learning English like yesterday. It's not like I was born yesterday, but if I was, things would be a lot harder. And English can be hard at times because we have different rules, but some people say, at least one guy told me last night that Vietnamese has all these different grammar rules and it will drive you crazy and off the wall and back onto the wall so that you could fall off it again on the wall, off the wall, around in circles big mess do you think question number 10 do you think English is important and why? I believe that English is important at the moment because English is the most popular language in the world at the moment. So if you want to be able to communicate, you should use the most popular languages in the world. And the coolest languages, in my opinion, since I was born and raised with it. Just like oatmeal, I like oatmeal and I like English. I have that bias. I'm racist. I have a stereotypical, closed-minded view on these things. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. I just know that I like English and oatmeal and basketball and girls. But not in that exact order, necessarily. Number 11. English is becoming a meaty language. Do you think so? <laughs> Who wrote this question? <laughs> Sounds like a foreigner. Seems like a Vietnamese person wrote this question. Let me rephrase the question. Number 11. Do you think English is becoming more of a, like a meaty language? Or what do you think? Do you think so? Uh, I think, uh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> English is becoming more of a, like a meaty language. It's like when you meet people, you use English because English is the most popular language. That was topic one. Questions for topic one. It's a waste of time. It's very boring and depressing. But for the most part, I like traveling because it 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 beats the alternative of sitting around not doing anything. Number two, where do you usually go for your holiday? I like to go to Disneyland. I've never been there. Oh, I went there one time when I was seven years old. I usually don't do anything on holidays. I don't have holidays. I don't believe in holidays. Maybe sometimes I do, but... Put a smile on your face and make the world better. Take a little break. Like, every week you should take a Sabbath. You should take, like, the weekend off. Which may start on a Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday afternoon. You may have a day off, two days off, three days off whole week off this once a year you may have Christmas off or the, the Lunar New Year Tet holiday or other satanic holidays I, I did not mean to say satanic you know it's midnight right now wow it's really late I should talk a little quieter <laughs> I'm not thinking about other people that's pretty sad I should think about other people okay now next question
Number two. Where do you usually go for your holiday? Uh, oh. I, I don't know. I just go maybe to a park. Maybe I just go to play basketball. Or video games. Or girls. It's a ghost. That's what Joey would always say on Friends. Nobody told me life was gonna be this way. Now I'm gonna answer some more questions right away. Number three. Can you talk about your last holiday? Hmm. Okay, let's see. I celebrated the Lunar New Year, the 10th holiday, which is around the 10th of February, 2013, in the north of Vietnam at somebody's hometown, and in the south at somebody else's hometown in Vietnam. And they're, they, they were both similar and different at the same time, and it was interesting, to say the least. Where would you visit if you had the money and the time? I would not go anywhere. I would just stay in Vietnam and continue to do what I'm doing, or something. I don't know. Maybe I would go to, to Japan. Do you like traveling far away or near your hometown? Hmm. Far away, probably. That was question five. Question number six. What are some tourist attractions in the city? Hmm. Uh, maybe the War Museum. And maybe the cinema, too. Because mm. I like to watch movies. And Bam Nu Lao. And the big, big uh, building where you can land a helicopter on. And any place with the basketball hoop, because I like basketball, and any place with girls, and, and free Wi-Fi, and oatmeal. Number seven. What kinds of transportation do you like to go traveling on? Bicycle. They dab bicycle. Number eight. How do you like to travel? By bicycle. They dab. Number mm, eight. Right? Many people save money to travel abroad. What do you think about this? I think that's a good idea. Number nine. What is the steepest way of traveling, do you think? Bicycle. Number ten. Where do you like to spend your vacation? Under the starry night, sleeping outdoor, in a garden. Mm. Next to my trusty laptop, which has actually had some cracks in them. Topic 3, health. And see, number 1, word. Tighten muscle, eat less and more vegetable, gain lose weight, lift weight every other day, swim regularly, take out jogging, get some outdoor exercise, give up smoking, ride a bicycle, join a swim, uh, join a, join a gym. Number two, what health problems do you often have? A cold, sore throat, goggles, warm water, headache, a toothache, the flu, the stomach ache, a backache, and ear ache, use ear drops. A few times when I go and eat some street food in Vietnam, since I have been in Vietnam since the year 2012, a few times my tummy would ache in pain like maybe I ate too much or there was something wrong with the food and my tummy, my stomach, my belly would feel horrible. In my life I've had a little bit of all these different kind of like you know sicknesses and diseases sometimes and the one that, that, that I would have the most is like a common cold that you get when there's like um, like when the weather changes, like during spring or during the fall, those trans those are the two transition seasons. Spring helps you transition from winter to summer, and the fall helps you transition from the summer to the winter. Huh? Sometimes when I'm in the transition seasons, like spring or fall. When it's going from hot to cold or cold to hot, I get a nosebleed. My nose starts to 
bleed out red blood. Sometimes that happens. Like if the day is like hot and then cold, and then my nose doesn't know what to do. Hmm. Next question, number three. Health is gold. Do you agree or disagree? Number three. Health is gold. Yeah, I agree. Number four. What do you often do to keep fit? Bicycle. Number five. What is a healthy diet? A rainbow. Number six. What should we do to have good health? Pray. Pray. Number seven. How long do you do exercise a day? Twelve hours. As long as I'm up, I'm exercising. Mostly exercise in my mouth. Number eight. What kind of exercise do you do? All kinds. Mostly just ride my bicycle and exercise my jaw. Exercising my jaw. Right here. Exercising my jaw. In other words, talking. Number nine. Do you like doing martial arts like karate, kung fu, judo, Jackie Chan things, Jet Li things, Bruce Lee things? Absolutely. Number 10. What kind of sports do you like the best? Basketball. And my second favorite is volleyball. Wow. That's, that's interesting. I'm Joey Arnold. This is Original Oatmeal. Here are some typical questions already that I've just read to you for the last 17 minutes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Forever. Let's see. What else can I read? Let me go back to the beginning. Ah, oh, look at all this. Topic 4. Free time and entertainment. Number 1. What do you have to do in your free time? Make movies. Number 2. Do you like watching TV? Yeah. What channel? Discovery. I like to discover you. Or, uh, what TV programs do you like? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Number 3. Which kinds of films do you like to watch? Adventure. Number 4. What kind of music? Do you like to listen to Michael Jackson? Number five, what kind of books do you like to read? The Bible. Number six, what is your favorite songs or singer? singers? Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I made another video. <laughs> My favorite song is Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears. Oops, I made another video by Joey Arnold, the original oatmeal. Number seven, what's your hobby? Making movies. Number eight, do you like shopping? No. Are you addicted to shopping? No. Well, sometimes. Number nine, do you like doing chores? Showing, housework, making cakes? No. Number ten, in your opinion, who should do the chores? Not me. Number eleven, do you like to be alone at home? Yes, because then I can make all the videos in the world that I want to make. And nobody will tell me, stop, stop, stop making videos. Okay. <laughs> Number 12. How often do you use the internet? I use the internet all day, every day, even when I'm sleeping. And what for? You know, for everything. Number 13. What website do you use to access? Facebook, YouTube, MiaOmnia.com. Number 14. What are the good sides and the bad sides of the internet? The good side is that it can help you do everything. The bad side is if you don't use it, you might die. Topic 5. Education. Number 1. When did you begin schooling? When I was born. Actually, maybe um, my mom started homeschooling me and I started learning, like, you know, right away. And, and more when I was like, do and. And then I started learning math when I was like six years old and learning how to read when I was like eight and nine and, and writing about 
then to and uh, then I went to public high school when I was 15 years old. So before I was 15 years old, I did not go to public school. I went to school at home. My mother was my teacher. Number two, what time do schools usually begin and finish? 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Number three, what major are you studying? None. I'm not currently in school. But I did study about psychology, sociology, anthropology, study of man, the study of how people think and act and respond <laughs> in and around people and societies and groups and all these different things around the world and different kinds of political structures and cultures and religions and, and countries and all these different things and how people think and why people do things and where people come from, where they come from, where they are, where they're going and helping people and being a teacher, tutor, counselor, pastor, teacher, guide, thinker, free thinker, helper, typewriter, how to how to type on a keyboard, how to make websites, and a lot of other things. A lot of very important things that are not directly and necessarily related to TC English. However, they are related enough to what I'm doing now in Vietnam TC English. How do you rate your English? I rate my English a uh, 10 out of 10. Number six, how can you use English in the future? By talking in English with everything that I do and how I communicate with people. Number seven, do you have any memory with your old teacher? Hmm, do you have any good memories of your old teacher? Yes, I have tons of good memories of my teachers, of course. Number seven. No, I already did number seven. Number eight. How many days a week do you go to school? Every day I go to school because every day I learn. Number nine. Do you go to school in the morning or in the afternoon? Both. All the time. I used to go to school in the morning and the afternoon and I still learn. I believe in lifelong learning. Number ten. What are the basic cr criteria to, to finding work? Um, look and talk to people. The, no, the, more, the more the people you know, the better. It's called networking. Go to tag.com and click on like, like, like to everybody. That's what I do. Number 11. Do you think that it is important for schools to have internet access? Yes. Because internet is important. Why? Because internet is important. Number... Well, do you think that the internet will replace libraries? Hmm. Yes, in a way, but no, in another way. Hard to explain. For the most part, it kind of does, but not really. The internet shows you what's in the library, so the libraries will be connected to the internet. It's not that the library goes away, it's that the library changes in how it works. Is it always good to use a projector in the class? Yes, always good. Number 14. Have you ever been tricked by your friend when a schoolboy, uh, when a, uh, huh, I don't understand the question. Uh, um, sir, I have been tricked. Topic 6. Transportation. Number one. What are your what are the advantages and disadvantages of traveling by a bus, a car, or a bicycle? Uh, the advantages is that you get somewhere. The disadvantage is if you make a mistake and you get an accident. Number two. What's your favorite means of transportation? Bicycle. Number three. Which means of transportation do you think is the safest? Bicycle. Number four. Which animal do you do you are you scared of the most? Hmm. Nah, uh, yeah, I guess okay. Maybe I'll just say snakes for now.
So there's, there's, there's all these mis- Yeah, colorful eyes. Colorful eyes. A crocodile, yeah, yeah, they're scary, and dinosaurs, dinosaurs, it's a ghost. This is so, so I see mistakes in, in these questions. Who wrote this? Mm -hmm. There are mistakes in this. No. Who wrote it? My friend. Uh, okay. Yeah. Your friend, okay. Yeah. Huh, I see. Anyways, where was I? Let's see, number five. What should people do to prevent traffic jams? Buy cars. <laughs> Buy cars. No, I don't know. Stay home. If you don't want a traffic jam, take a different road. Or don't go outside. Or go faster. I don't know. Something like that. Number six. Should we commute by public transportation? No. Number seven, what do you think about traffic in, in Ho Chi Minh City of Vietnam? I think it's okay. Number eight, show the way to your house. Huh, you want me to tell you how to get to my house? Go on CMT, then turn on Aga, then turn on Lo Bambuk, and then good luck after that. Number nine, what kind of vehicle is popular in Vietnam? Motorbike. Topic seven, city and country life. Number one, apprentices and disadvantages living in the city and in the countryside. The the advantage of living in the country is that it may be nicer and have some fresh air. air. The disadvantage is that you have less opportunity because you have less people around you. The disadvantage of living in the city is that there is more pollution and it's louder. However, the advantage is that you have more opportunities because there's more people and stuff going on for more jobs and learning and, and helping people and all these different things like that. Number two, what's your hometown famous for? Uh, the world's tallest barber pole. That is in Forest Grove, Oregon, which is uh, like 20 or to 40 kilometers from Portland, Oregon of the United States of America. Number three, where do you prefer to live, the city or the countryside? City. Topic eight, future plans. Hmm. What are your future plans? Uh, make more movies. Number nine, no, topic nine, career and jobs. Number one, what would you like to become in the future? Ah, uh, producer. Number two, what are you going to do after graduating from university? Be a producer. Number three, what are you going to do in the next five years? Be a producer. Number four, where are you going to get married after I become a producer? Number five, are you going to work in your hometown or a big city? A big city as a producer. Topic 10, the internet and computer. Number one, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a computer? The disadvantage is that it may suck out your brain. However, the advantage is that it may make your brain bigger. Number two, should parents control the use of computers for children? Maybe, sometimes. Number three, do you often use the internet? Yes. Uh, question four, about how many hours a day do you use the internet? Like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Number five, do you think our lives have been improved by the internet? Yes. Number six, what are the sites you most commonly access? Facebook. Number seven, would you like to go on a date with someone you met on the internet? Yes, because if I like them online, I probably will like them in real life too. It's not like they can lie to me on the internet. Number eight, give me a reason why you think that email is a good way for people to communicate. Because it's always there for you. Number nine, do you believe in love on the internet? Why or not? Why not? Yes, I believe in love on the internet because the internet is real too. And people can communicate who they really are through the internet because the internet is just a tool. It's just a tool. And it works. Now we're back to the beginning. The beginning says, uh, 
look at these questions and, and, and you listen to the conversation and that underline the correct answer. Number one, what does James do when he does to the wine reason? Huh, well, what does James do in, in, the, in the wine reason? He attends sales conferences, interviews people, or gives presentations. Huh. Number two, how often does James travel to Italy? He travels to Italy once a year, twice a year, or two or three times a year. Huh. Number three, what does Monik lives? Ah, oh, where does he live? Um, he lives in London, or Paris, or Rome. Uh, listen, and fill in the missing gaps. Mattering in Chinese. Huh. Angling. Oh my goodness. This is a lot of hard work. Listen and fill in the gaps. More than 1.000 million people speak it as a second or foreign language. Over three-fourths of the information of the internet is in English. 80% of the people who use the internet communicate in English. About half of the population in the European Union speaks in English. 69% of the people in the European Union who don't speak English as the first language think it's the most important language to learn. The estimate number of people in the world who are learning English at present time is over 2 billion. Oh my goodness. Wow. Extracting time. Time to extract and to remember what you're learning. Listen to the conversation between an interviewer and Joe Emanuel. Uh, think about it. But with the phrases that you hear. Wow. Get the paperwork. Wow. That's it. I'm going through all of this. He's from Portugal. He speaks English. Uh, he's from Barcelona. I he plays tennis every Saturday. He goes to the holiday twice a he has a holiday twice a year. And most of the meetings are in Spain. This is the conversation between the interviews in, in Geneva and decide whether the statements are true or false. He works for a TV producer company. Oh sure. He does doesn't speak English in her office. Hmm. No, false. She makes a lot of phone calls. True. He doesn't contact people in different countries. False. It is easy for her to understand one Japanese and American speak English false. Extract three. Extract three. Listen to the conversation between an interviewer and Kendall and answer these questions. What does the interviewer mean himself? Sales manager. Does he travel a lot for work? Yes, he does. How often does he go to Sweden? Two or three times a year. Does he speak Japanese in the country? Why? No, because his company language is in English. Listen and fill in the gaps with the words and phrases here. Extract one. Interviewer. Uh, Jose Manuel. Okay, man, are, are, are anything changing in Europe, Spain in, at the moment? Are there any new developments? Yes, in fact, there are very big things. We're changing our distribution system. A lot of meetings with the consultants to find the best system to use the new center. It's a lot of work, and it's very important that I make the right decision. Oh, yeah. Genevi, are there any changes taking place in your company or your job? Well, yeah. Teleengines is expanding very quickly, so that means I'm making new contacts and working with more people in my job and in France right now. The number of TV channels is increasing. My company wants to buy a TV channel, so we're working really hard to be successful. We're hoping the new, the new soon Teleengines has got its own TV channel. Really? Wow. So exciting. Wow. Really? And Kenzo, there are problems in the economy at present. Are companies like Electric Trolloc having problems too? Oh, sure, yes. Most companies are having problems in my division. Electric professional product sales are decreasing, but the consumer products division isn't having the problem. In fact, sales are going up a little there, but I expect an improvement in my division in two or three years. Oh, really? Nationality Sweden. Head office. Schluck. Wow, freezes, all these things, vacuum, employment, all these different years like 1925. Mm. Listen and fill in the gaps again. Tim in 1998, Eden was just the hole you know, in the ground, but today is a great success. And someone coughing in the background. The UK top food is the attraction is the idea that Eden Parker comes from. I don't know. One evening I was in a pub with a friend and an architect from. Cornwall called Jonathan Bond. We had a discussion about Cornwall and its problems. He wants to bring more history to the area and create more jobs. At that time, there was a lot of newspapers on the TV about the Amazon, Amazon rainforest, and we thought it wasn't 
big enough to do anything worthy of. And he wanted to make some greenhouses with it, but we're not exactly sure how that worked. And three years later, when Jonathan Bell came out, he was like, hey, we're going to have the eating process, but we don't really know what the eating process is. And it was like, wow. I mean, there was the biggest problem because we had to go through all these different challenges with eating, and we didn't really know what it was. And everything weighed like 86 pounds. And wow, 86 pounds. Mm, that's really interesting. And, and it had something to do with the Millennium Commission. That was the organization that gave money to special parties to celebrate the year 2000. The problem was that we needed to 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 find the same amount, another 43 million pounds ourselves before they gave us any money. Well, did we find it? Um, probably not. I don't know. Let me think about this. Hmm. Yes, but it wasn't easy. Ah, and the weather certainly didn't help us. And the work began in 1998. It rained every day for 100 days straight, and the workers didn't make any progress for three months. It gave us a lot of problems. We thought it was the end of, our, of a great idea. A million people did the eating in the first year. Did you expect so many things here? No, we didn't expect it. But the best thing that happened was the eating part was a huge sound. How did you do it? Well, we, we, we did it because we had a wonderful team of people. We had the same vision, we worked together, and you believe and I did it. You did so much and worked so hard and you make it successful. Do you have any plans for this year? Uh, certainly. Uh, exciting plans, but the topic uh, is it's for another interview and we're not going to share these secrets to you. Okay, at the moment. Hello, James. Welcome to the California. <laughs> Welcome to California. It's good to meet you. And it's good to be here at last. Did you have any problems finding us? No, oh, Jack Malcolm. We gave, oh yeah, this guy gave us directions in London last year and they got on a taxi and there was a great flight and, um, and then we went over there and we hopped on it. We had some Mexican food too. And he came to San Francisco and, and when he was high and tapped on these wines or discovered nearly 15 years ago. And he's a wine mercy before he became a lawyer and he worked for his uncle when he finished the university. Wow, really? Wow, interesting. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I hope that didn't become very, very boring.